Hey guys, what's up? By Sectatron here from One Hive Gazette, here with the next video. And today we are talking about how to take out these Town Hall 10 bases that have the multi infernos. Because um, we are seeing a little bit of that come back, mostly in these random wars, but it can be a little intimidating once you've only seen single targeting infernos uh, for a few months, and then boom, you have a multi inferno. How do you deal with it? It does a little more damage, it got a slight buff in a recent update. So we're going to take a look at a couple attacks, uh, including one that failed, but also, of course, some successful attacks. Uh, most of these are on semi-maxed Town Hall 10. I think this is the lowest. This is one of the lower level bases we'll take a look at. Um, we have attacks on closer to max Town Hall 10s as well. Um, but anyway, this is how you want to do it. You want to charge in with a queen, or you want to have your queen meet up with the kill squad, but either way, the key to taking out these bases is really the healers. Um, the Infernos cannot block heal, and that is what you want to take advantage of. The uh, single Infernos, the strength of them is that they'll take out your heroes regardless of whether they're being healed because they can get that damage up to about 2,000 per second, uh, which is way too much to heal over. So your king, your queen, your golems are all going to risk getting destroyed by single infernos but if you have healers you can do these elaborate queen charges because the infernos are pretty much negligible it does a little bit of damage but not a whole lot now the queen even dies in this attack but the healers are going to peel off onto the kill squad so it's still good value the queen took out a lot as well um, on her charge there if he had started this part a little bit earlier he might have been able to save his queen Something to think about. As soon as the CC came out, maybe he should have started the kill squad, but not a huge deal. Things are going in, and uh, typically the winning attack strategies for bases that have multi infernos are going to be either hog or balloon related in terms of laloon. Hogs or laloon. So that's what's going to be on the back end of the base, but not a huge uh, hog, uh, hog portion or laloon portion. You want to have a big kill squad. Um, most of that's going to be the healers that you bring for the initial queen walk or queen charge, which I highly recommend. Now, if you don't have a queen that's of a high enough level, if maybe she's like even below level 30, which can happen um, for certain Town Hall 10s that might have been a little bit rushed, um, you have to make adjustments, maybe bring the healers just for the kill squad. Think about doing something like that. But um, the main idea here is is that the traditional, especially the Witch Bowler attack, not going to be quite as effective. You can still heal through the Infernos, uh, but they will get to your Bowlers. They'll take out your, wit your Witches if they're close to the outside of the base. It's a little riskier trying a Witch Bowler attack, and it's frankly easier to take out the bases with some kind of Queen Walk, Queen Charge beginning, um, and then a Kill Squad with your King, possibly some Bowlers, and uh, finishing it off with Hogs. Okay. Next one here, this base might be even a little bit better, a little more compact. This is a Queen Charge La Luna attack, and that's another great option uh, that we're going to talk about here. So starts off the Queen. Uh, the air defense is protected, so he has to actually wall break in to get to that air defense. But remember, the important thing is the single Infernos are what hurt the Queen Charges the most. So as long as it's a multi-Inferno, it can't do a whole lot to disrupt the Queen Charge. Uh, wall breakers get a little bit weird here. So it goes ahead and uh, uses a rage, which is a great idea, especially with those level, uh, what is that, level 10, I want to say, level 10 walls, I think. Um, one raged wall breaker can break through the wall. So that was a good rage, and he'll also get some benefit there um, as it relates to healing up his queen as she takes out the CC troops. Um, so she'll take all that out. This guy put a balloon in the CC, which wasn't the best idea because the baby dragon doesn't get the full um, effect if there's also an air troop in there. So right here, encounters the defensive queen, gets her taken out. Lots of good value. Tesla's air sweepers, wizard towers, um, already has one air defense down. She might start to push forward for another. We'll see which way she goes here. I think she's going to... Oh, another core Tesla. That's also important. Now, time can be an issue, which is why you want to get those minions down as soon as you start your balloons. So right there, here come the balloons. Um, not a whole lot of stuff to clean up on that side because the king kind of walked around but up towards the top that's where he wants to drop his minions to start clean up as soon as possible meanwhile these hounds are going to be very effective at tanking so you don't have to worry about the single infernos locking onto your lava hounds and popping them the queen actually just went down right there but not a big deal she got 
most of the value. The minions are already down, like I said, for cleanup as well as a wizard. Uh, the healers actually went all the way up to the top to heal that wizard, which is kind of funny. And the heal spells are going to be very, very helpful because otherwise you're at risk of some red air bombs and the constant damage from the multi-inferno uh, taking out big groups of balloons as well as wizard towers. So to avoid that happening, the heal spell is good to use over the infernos, over wizard towers, areas where lots of balloons are going to be under fire. Um, use the haste and use the heals. The rages aren't as important because there's not a huge like rush to get through the base as there is when there are single infernos and your hounds are popping like crazy. In this, you can be a little more patient because the lava hounds will last a lot longer, so you don't have to worry about having your balloons under rage or under haste like the entire attack or anything like that. Okay, um, two more. One of these is going to be a failed attack. We're going back to the current war we're in. And I'm going to show my own failed attack as a bad example. Um, yeah, get roasting myself on the channel here. Although I did have a swag spell three-star attack um, earlier in this war. So that is at least one uh, good thing that came out of it. But this one wasn't a good attack here. And we'll talk about why. It's tempting. Uh, it certainly was tempting for me here to use a very simple kill squad, Golem. Uh, I have a P.E.K.K.A. in the CC, which I thought would do well because the uh, the multi-infernos can't do anything to the P.E.K.K.A. So I was going to bring a Golem, P.E.K.K.A., Heroes, to get in there, grab two air defenses, the Inferno Tower, the Queen, and just try to get all that taken out. Now, in hindsight, the jump spell was hardly needed because everything the Queen could reach from that compartment that I'm going to wall break into. So the jump spell was questionable. Um, I could have maybe just taken out the P.E.K.K.A. and gone for less here, but um, here everything goes in, have the Rage spell, and the problem here is that, yes, there's no single Inferno that's going to take out my tanks, but it doesn't mean this is a good kill squad, and there's a Dragon in the CC, a lot for the Queen to have to deal with here, and a lot of room for her to walk the wrong way. It wasn't the best... Uh, entry point because you can see she ignores that air defense which definitely hurts and then using La Luna on the rest of the base I don't have a ton of troops so this is a very easy way to fail an attack is to try to do like a basic kill squad like this because what ends up happening is things can kind of go weird you don't quite get the value you wanted and it's it's not the best way to take advantage of the base you want to really take advantage at Town Hall 10, which is still difficult to three-star at. Um, you want to take advantage of how those multi-infernos can't block your healers and can't block your heal spells. Additionally, I try to use a Rage right here, which um, a heal at some point would have been a lot better because these multi-infernos, they're no joke now. Um, they do more damage, and we often think like, okay, we can just ignore the multi-infernos, but they are doing quite a bit of damage to those balloons. They got it, that one in the middle got them taken out pretty fast. So you really got to think about how you're, if you're going to do a La Loon, you're going to heal up your balloons and you're going to get into that multi-inferno. The air defenses are less important. The multi-inferno is more important, which is kind of the opposite um, of what we think. I think it's 23 as our last attack here. Um, I want to, yeah. It's the opposite for a La Loon when you have multi-infernos. Get to those Infernos, heal through, whatever you have to do, get the Inferno Tower taken out. Air defenses are less of an issue because your Lava Hounds will last a lot longer on them. And that was another mistake, I guess you could say, I made there. So, not the best attack, but we'll take a look at one more. Once again, going back to what I said is the best thing to do. A Queen Walk, um, Kill Squad, Hog Attack. And great value up on that uh, Wizard Tower there. Look for those Bowler Bounces off the storages. Sometimes they're available on certain bases. Uh, so it gets good, good value for just six troop space there. Uh, queen walk started, going to walk her around the base here. Good value, uh, doesn't even have to rage her up or anything. And right there starts to break the funnel on the other side, meeting up with the golem. So a very small walk, but the value is that the healers are going to peel off onto the kill squad. Right here he has to pop the ability. If he had dropped the golem a little earlier, maybe he would have avoided that, but not a huge deal. Uh, so wall breakers go in, opening up the kill squad. These guys had a lot of dragon CCs, which can be effective when paired with the multi-inferno because it requires a lot from the queen um, if she's in a kill squad. But it goes down really quickly with the raged queen and the wizards and everything. So 
moving through here the healers like i said peeling off on to his kill squad and that's great value when you have the multi infernos because they can't do a whole lot with three or four healers in there healing everything up now here come the hogs here goes ahead and gets that heal down a uh, little early you don't want to pre-heal typically um, especially if there's a lot for them to get through you want the full value of the heal but really not a big deal they get they get the value there and they're moving through all healed up Actually has more heals than he even needs, probably. But another heal for the hogs. And uh, I don't even think they're going to hit any giant bombs here. Maybe one by that air defense. But like I said, the heroes are going to get great value under those healers. As you can see here, still has the queen, still has the king. The queen will take out that inferno. Uh, nice poison on the defensive king. And this one is all but GG. Uh, crutch this base. And that is the power, as you've seen in those three successful attacks, of using the healers for a queen charge or maybe even more effectively, as we've seen here, a queen walk that meets up with a kill squad, because you don't have to worry about that inferno melting all your tanks. You can have a golem, your heroes, bowlers. The bowlers will die, but the heroes will stay up a lot longer than they otherwise would against single infernos. Don't make my mistakes. Don't um, use a basic kill squad and ignore the power of the multi-inferno, but that will do it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later. Bisectatron out.